talking to Jeffrey Smith about his film Genetic Roulette. The first question is, how did you become interested in the whole topic of GMOs and health? Well, I went to a lecture in 1996 by a genetic engineer. And as an expert in genetic engineering, he was deeply concerned that companies like Monsanto were about to release the products of this infant science into the environment where it could never be recalled and into our food supply where the unpredicted side effects could negatively affect everyone who eats. The technology was not ready for prime time, was prone to dangerous side effects that were being brushed aside by the companies and by the FDA. So I realized people need to hear about this, and I started translating the concerns of the scientists into language that everyone could understand. Mm -hmm. And did you have a, any personal reasons for being passionate about this particular topic? Well, I've always been passionate about food and healthy food, but uh, my background was more of a communications person, um, education person, marketing. So to me, what I did is I saw that if people had the information that I was hearing and it was communicated well, then their reaction would be significant in the marketplace. It might be significant in policy and we could see real change. So with an experience in education and communications, as he was telling me this, I was already translating my mind so it would be more effective than he was describing to reach people and give them the information they needed to make wise choices. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, you could ask us to do one or two things, what would those one or two things be to make a difference? One, avoid eating genetically engineered foods. Uh, if you even 5% of U.S. shoppers stop eating GM brands. That would be sufficient, we think, to create a tipping point of consumer rejection, to kick GMOs out of the U.S. food supply in the same way that a tipping point kicked GMOs out of the European food supply. So one, avoid GMOs, and you can do that most easily by going to non-gmoshoppingguide.com or downloading the free iPhone application Shop No GMO. The second is to get involved with activism. Now, we have a tipping point network of people that are involved in educating their communities. There's state groups that are trying to get labels on GMOs, and there's 37 states that have programs to try and do that. You can go to our website at responsibletechnology.org, sign up for the tipping point network, and connect with people in your area to find the opportunities for activism and education. Great. Uh, as part of the One Earth Film Festival, we actually have a Young Filmmakers Contest. So do you have any advice for young people either making environmental films or just on this whole issue of GMOs? Well, I'm, I'm not a... Um, I, I haven't learned <clears throat> filmmaking and then looked for a topic to to incorporate. I was never a book writer looking for a topic to incorporate. I was an activist and a change maker on GMOs, and I used books and articles and blogs and film, and have been successful. And what was successful originally about my book is also what's successful in film is stories. Uh, my whole book, Seeds of Deception, became the world's best-selling book on GMOs because it was in story format. I think if I had more time and more uh, budget for genetic roulette, it would have been more on the story level, but it turns out it was effective nonetheless. It got movie of the year, and it got transformational film of the year from different groups, and for that, it was about communicating um, in chunks that were going deep into people's experience and combining combinations. In this case, we don't have uh, profound uh, peer-reviewed published studies because of the suppression of the research. So we had to sort of sample individuals who got rid of GMOs for themselves and their families and got better. Doctors who prescribed non-GMO diets to patients and they got better. Veterinarians and farmers who took livestock off of GMOs and they got better. Lab animals fed GMOs and they got worse. And showing that the same areas that were affecting humans and livestock and lab animals are on the rise in the U.S. population since GMOs were introduced. That was the thesis. So we painted a picture where the audience could connect the dots and see them from all these different angles, but we couldn't leave them there. I don't want to get people upset and nervous and say goodbye and good luck. What I want to do is to give them an arc out of it. And so we talked about those two things, how to avoid GMOs 
how to get involved, and then the tipping point, how we could end the genetic engineering of the food supply. And we also introduced the action for Prop 37 in California as an example of what people are doing on the ground. And so that's one thing. The second thing is, in terms of marketing this particular video, which is very important for filmmakers, the moment they've created their film, they go, how do I deal with it? We have uh, a particular um, network around the country and around the world that are very passionate about the GMO issue. So it wasn't difficult to, when we produced a quality product, to put it out through those channels. And we had like three weeks of free showing online. We had 1.7 million views. And uh, it's being picked up by uh, different countries, TV, etc. Because it is a relevant topic and it treats the topic fairly. So, um, you know, I'm not, I can't give a, a class in how to make films because I'm sure the film students are, are better than me at that. But uh, what I did is I focused on where, what I knew, which was the health dangers of GMOs, how to communicate it for effective impact on people, and how to arc them out of the film so that they felt empowered and feel like a victor rather than a victim. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you.